Hi, everyone, and welcome to Paper Pumpkin Week here on Creative Chelsea. This week, I am sharing with you some great card ideas that you can make with one set of supplies from the September 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Autumn Abundance. This beautiful kit creates nine cards, three in these three different designs, and includes coordinating envelopes. If you would like to watch me unbox the kit, create these cards, or see any of my other alternative projects, you can click on the playlist and I'll link it up here in the top right corner. Today I have a really fun card to share with you. It is a slider card using this circle um, card base. So that card base has that circle cut out and then that cute little snail, he's going to slide right across our card here with this. It's a hidden slider card because you can see here that you don't actually see the sliding mechanism. And so that's just really fun. So I'm excited to share this with you. If you are interested in paper pumpkin, and you would like to get your own subscription to this monthly crafting kit, you can subscribe using the link in the description below. I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and help you with any questions you may have about paper, pumpkin, or any Stampin' Up! products. You can contact me through my email address, and I list that at the bottom of the description in every video. All right, so a lot of the things that we need for this kit or for this card, do come from the kit. We already have cut our front of our card base from the back, so we're good on that. We do need to take the Cajun Craze uh, piece. This is the square piece that goes behind here. We're gonna cut it in half. So let's see, so it's just under four inches, and I think that's the same on this side. So we'll just do a little less than two and call that good. Now, if you want to do any stamping on this piece beforehand, I did think about it afterwards, and so we can do that. Um, let's grab, I think the branch might be a really nice addition. So we'll grab the branch image from the kit, and then of course our Cajun Craze ink spot. And then just, let's just go ahead and stamp on this bottom one. I don't know, going in a little bit on one side and then let's just repeat that on the second one and we'll just see how it turns out. So kind of the same location, just like that. Okay, we'll see, I don't know. It's always fun to try something a little different. So let's grab our snail and we're going to also grab a scrap piece of cardstock and I'm going to use just this folded or this layered section on this envelope piece. Sure, why not? Okay. So we're not going to see this. This is just scrap. So what I did is I removed that area where we've got the, the glued section. It's about a half inch. It doesn't need to be perfect. It can be any scrap piece. We are going to add this snail to our scrap with dimensionals. This is going to pop it up. Add just a couple so it holds it in place nicely. So two dimensionals. And then you want to hide this behind the snail. Okay, so we don't want to see this little kind of like a popsicle stick, okay? This is now gonna sit on the, the bottom of this. And actually, I think I might want to have it come down a little bit more. So I'm going to remove that second dimensional so that it can sit down a little lower. There we go. That I like that a little bit more. So do you see how before it wasn't all going all the way down? So now we just have one dimensional at the top that's holding it so that we have more space for that snail to kind of slide back and forth on. So we're going to rotate these so that the, the branches are kind of in opposite corners. 
and we are going to add these together with dimensionals. So go with the one that's going to be on the bottom. So that's the one on top. I know that's confusing. This is like it's flat. This one's going to be popped up and will move back and forth. So the top panel is going to get a dimensional on that side. Let's go ahead and do two here and dimensional on this side. Like that. And we're going to add we can, we can take this off for now, but we're going to add these two pieces together. Okay. So we have the top piece, we have the bottom piece, and then we have our snail that's going to go in between and it can now slide back and forth easily. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Let's just take one quick minute and double check that this is going to fit inside our hole. Perfect. Okay. So we, we don't want it to be any shorter than the opening. So we want that to be all the way covered. Okay. So on this side, we're actually going to take the, our popsicle stick. Okay. So it's going through, this is what's going to move it back and forth and we're going to fold it up like that and then we're going to fold you can fold it back down if you want just to make that a nice and thick and then you can trim off any excess okay that's going to be the piece that moves the snail back and forth we're going to attach our handle to that So let's go ahead and just adhere. You don't have to do this, but this is just the, the extra handle because I brought it back down. Okay. Okay. So just like that. And whenever you're doing this, you do want to just continuously check it to make sure that um, all of the pieces are still moving and you haven't inhibited any of the pieces from moving back and forth. We're going to go ahead and attach this to the card first because then we know where the snail will stop. And then from there we can attach the handle. So when we add this, we will want to add dimensionals to the back piece. So let's just go ahead and add a dimensional to those corners there. And then we'll want to add glue dots to the bottom. Okay, so dimensionals in the top corners, glue dots in the bottom corners. And then it doesn't really matter which is the front or like which side or way you do this. Let's put the snail in the middle. You don't want to see the Cajun craze piece um, showing on the edges. So just keep that in mind. And then you want your snail to be about center. Okay. And then when you move this back and forth, it will move inside that circle. Isn't that so cute? Let's go ahead and we'll do the handle really quickly. So what I've got here is I have my Cajun craze strip. So this is just a piece of cardstock that I have from my own craft supply. It's one inch by, I don't know, five inches. We're going to um, go ahead and let's create a fishtail banner on one side. And I'm just going to do that with a little snip or a slit slip in the center and then cut from the corner to that slit. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. And then you can take a pen or if you have a white gel pen, you could use that. And we're going to write the word pull because if we don't, people might not know to pull to get the snail to move. 
So just slowly right pull, okay, across the top, just like that. All right, push it all the way to the left side now, and we're gonna put our pull tab on there. So maybe give it three fourths of an inch or so of space so that people can grab a hold of it. And then on the back here, we're going to attach. Okay, so that's pushed all the way over. We're going about three fourths of the way down and we want to attach this here. Can you see that? To that piece. And I'm gonna use just some liquid glue because I know it's gonna hold on me and not come apart. Don't use too much, okay? So just like that. And if you want to make sure that it's straight, you can do that, okay? But I think it will be perfect. So once that is dry, then you can test it by run, moving that back and forth. And then we wanna cut just a little smaller than the edge on the other side. If you want to have the um, If you want to have, you know, another fish tail on that side, you can do that too. So it looks like the banner runs all the way across. That's, uh, you know, up to you. Okay, so I've got, you can use the um, strips if you want. Let's just do that. Or you can do the flat sheets, either one. You can use the, um, what are these called? Okay, foam adhesive strips. So you can go ahead and grab a foam adhesive strip and we're gonna put that on here. And this is gonna act as like a guide so that when we move it back and forth, it doesn't catch on anything. So it just goes all the way across on both sides, okay? So you can see how it's kind of like a track, a guide. Okay. And then we'll need to um, support the other side as well. So right there. And then if you have a strip like this, that's just a leftover, you can add it there for support. Okay, let's go ahead. Oh, we're not adding this yet, but you can test it. So pulling it, it stays, it doesn't move much because it's inside that track, but it's moving back and forth really nicely. Okay. So we know we know we're good to go on that. Now I thought it would be fun to kind of mimic this leaf design on the card base. So if you want to do this, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So what I did is I'm working with a crumb cake card base. And so I decided to use crumb cake ink just so that it's um, the same tone. It's not too distracting. And I'm going to use the leaf images as well as the branch. And so I do need to make sure those are clean because I especially use that branch with that Cajun craze. You don't want to mix those colors. So let's start with the branch since I've got that in my hand. Just add, you know, a couple little designs here or there. Focus mainly on the edges on the left and right side. You don't really need to worry about the bottom or top. Okay, maybe something like that. And then get your other leaves. They can overlap each other. They can be alone. And let's do the other leaf as well. And if you want to do some splattering, you could do some splattering. It really is quite just simple, whatever you want it to look like. You can see here that not all of my images were stamped perfectly, but it's going to be just fine. Okay. 
So once you've got your background stamped, go ahead and then remove your paper strips from your foam adhesive strips. You're going to want to hold this um, pole strip in place so that it doesn't get accidentally stuck to the foam adhesive strips. And then you're going to add this right to the center of your card base and press down on those strips. Okay. And then if you want, you can kind of curl this up a little bit so people know to pull it. It's so cute. Okay. And it should move very smoothly. You could also have a little bit of give, you know, because you don't want it to be so tight. But that's really cute. And I love that extra added branch in the background. Okay, so to decorate this, I thought it would be fun to use the die cut that is the coordinating die set. It's this gorgeous leaf. It's the same leaf um, that is in the kit. Let me see. And we do still have the copper leaf. So it's the same leaf here. I wanted to use gold um, as an accent. I had some of this gold foil left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that from there. If you don't have that, that's okay. And then I'm also using a the large label. Now they give you one extra and we've already used one. So if you still have an extra, you can just stamp on that. I didn't, so I just made my own um, just from some basic white card stock. And I wanted this to be stamped a little darker. So I went with the early espresso ink and I'm gonna just do with thanks. You could also do the sending autumn wishes your way if you want. And I'm gonna just do that here in the center of my strip. Just like that. And then I'm gonna cut this out and we'll move on to a really fun technique that I want to share with you. Isn't that so pretty? I love this die. Okay, so we're gonna add this. Let's do it with some glue dots to the corner here. I don't want it to be too, um, I don't want it to interrupt the flow of the snail. So wherever we put it, we, we wanna make sure it doesn't block the movement there. So I'm gonna bring it down into that bottom right corner and then just test it. Make sure the snail can still move really freely across that guide. And then we can pop our greeting on. I'm going to put dimensionals on it. Oh, didn't grab that. And I left some space here for a um, bow with my linen thread. So let's go ahead and put that in the center. like that. And again, just double check that things are still moving smoothly. And then let's talk about this cute bow. So this is made with linen thread and I want to share with you how you can dye your linen thread using your ink pads. And I think that the Stampin' Spots are perfect for this. So the first thing I want to do is cut my 10 inch piece. That's how much I want for my bow. And then I'm going to have like a tissue, paper towel, something nearby because it can, this can make a really messy of your fingers. So you're going to take your ink pad and hold on to your linen thread and on a clear block, you're going to smush. So I like to add a little bit of ink first so that way it has, it can get ink on both sides, but you're going to smush the linen thread between the clear block and the ink pad and then you kind of rotate your linen thread and do it again okay so you're kind of trying to get a smooth color on your linen thread and you may have to roll your linen thread or tap it in a couple spots if you see that it isn't doesn't have any color on one side okay so something like that then you're going to grab the other side with your tissue or paper towel 
and just do that last little bit there. Okay. Then you're going to take a part of your tissue and you're going to hold it with one hand and then rub the ink off of the linen thread with the other hand. Okay. Because this is really saturated and you don't want on um, like some ink to just get all over your card. So we're just going to keep rubbing this back and forth until we have, we're just not getting very much ink. You're going to still probably always have a little bit of ink come off on it, but we just don't want a lot of ink. And we can also kind of push it into the thread to kind of even out the color a little bit too. But you can see how much ink you get on it. Okay, so you just go do that back and forth. If you want, you can do this and then let it sit. That will also kind of help dry the ink. But if you can touch it and not get ink everywhere, then I think you're good. It's just if you're like really pressing hard on it, maybe that your ink is coming off. And then you're just going to make a bow. It's funny because it totally changes the texture of the linen thread, adding that little bit of ink. It like thickens it up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll pop on a glue dot and to the knot. Just like that. Okay, and your card's all done. So we got your little pull tab, it's working perfectly. A fun colored twine your gold leaf, and this cute little snail that's coming over to say thank you. So fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this fun slider card today. If you're interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images on how I created this card, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you're interested in getting your own paper pumpkin subscription, please do so using the link in the description box to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a creative day. Thanks.